companies who sell electric automobiles in China have received a big setback from the Chinese government. China has announced a reversal of billions of dollars in subsidies toward electric car manufacturers that had been paid out in the past. Many of these businesses have been left high and dry as a result of this abrupt transition. Government incentives were the reason why many of these firms had entered the electric car market in the first place. The Chinese government's knee-jerk reaction merely serves to demonstrate what experienced economists have been arguing all along. Right-wing economists have long held that the most effective method for a government to assist industry is to keep out of it, in essence, to pursue a laissez-faire policy approach. The Chinese electric vehicle industry is a textbook example of how government intervention can go horribly wrong. In today's video, we will pursue the complete narrative of why China began granting massive subsidies to electric vehicle manufacturers in the first place and why the country was eventually obliged to pull the rug out from under them. Welcome back to New Vehicle Media, your go-to channel for EV stock. Quick reminder that subscribing is free and liking the video helps YouTube suggest similar videos. Comments are loved and featured in upcoming videos. China's Electric Vehicle Obsession Chinese air pollution ranks among the worst in the world, with one of the highest concentrations of pollutants in the atmosphere. These worst figures are as a result of the fast industrialization that has taken place in the country during recent years. International pressure has been applied to China as a result of the enormous pollution that Chinese companies are producing. But the company has refused to accept any strategy that holds back their industrial expansion. As a result, China needed to implement new strategies to reduce its carbon impact. This is the point at which the concept of widespread adoption of electric vehicles was conceived. Beijing realized that if it could convince its citizens to begin using electric vehicles, pollution in urban areas would be significantly reduced very quickly. This would aid in the improvement of the health of its population as well as the reduction of foreign pressure. These factors influenced the Chinese government's decision to develop a national program that would ensure the widespread usage of electric cars by 2025. The difficulty, however, was that electric vehicles are extremely expensive when compared to other types of vehicles that rely on fossil fuels. Because of the technology necessary to create automobile batteries was still in its inception, the cost of such batteries is still excessive. It was at this point that the Chinese government decided it needed to interfere and provide incentives, for the simple reason that, given the market conditions, electric vehicles had no chance against conventional vehicles if they were left to their own devices. The Chinese government began paying subsidies that were extremely generous. The Chinese government was paying an average of $10,000 for every electric vehicle that was sold within the country. In addition, when it came to the production of electric buses, the government was even more accommodating. Every bus sold received a subsidy of approximately $30,000 per bus. For a short time, all of these incentives assisted the Chinese electric vehicle market gain a significant amount of momentum. And because of this, in a relatively short period of time, the Chinese market surpassed all others to become the world's largest market for electric vehicles. China Destroys the EV Sector Meanwhile, investors were watching the huge rises in the stock prices of Chinese electric vehicle manufacturers such as NIO and Xpeng as the industry gained momentum. Tens of thousands of new companies got on board as the industry flourished. Through mid-August 2021, the number of new Chinese firms dedicated to quote-unquote new energy vehicles increased by 81,000, increasing the total number of such businesses to more than 321,000. However, after China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology suggested a possible consolidation of the sector, popular electric car producers saw their shares plummet. In this statement, it was stated that the number of new energy vehicle firms is currently excessive and that they are in a small and dispersed state, and that the government must reduce the number of new enterprises. In 2017, the federal government curtailed manufacturing licenses and permits to minimize the number of entrants. This is essentially version 2.0 of that strategy. In their view, 
there has been an accumulation of overcapacity and an excessive number of brands that will not be able to compete in the market with their respective product lines. This has occurred frequently in the Chinese market across a wide range of industries, resulting in a race to the bottom, in which enterprises compete primarily on price. Due to the fact that these non-competitive corporations are willing to throw good money after terrible products, it puts a strain on the entire industry. It's expected that moves to consolidate the market will help China's leading electric car companies like NIO, Xpeng, Li Auto, and the Warren Buffett-backed BYD. Secondly, trade tensions between the US and the Chinese government have recently ignited. As a result, the state has been looking for ways to reduce expenditure. This is one of the reasons why China has hopped off the electric vehicle incentive train more quickly than it jumped on. Subsidies for electric vehicles were provided by the Chinese government in excess of $10 billion in 2018. This figure was predicted to grow substantially, reaching $25 billion by 2020 and $70 billion by 2025. Despite the fact that electric vehicles account for less than 10% of total automobile sales in China, they are causing the government considerable financial losses in the country. A direct outcome of this is that the Chinese federal government has reduced their subsidies bill by a whopping 50%. Additionally, local Chinese governments have requested that the subsidies that they have been providing to electric vehicle producers be totally phased out. For now, incentives will be granted only based on the vehicle's driving range. Vehicles that drive fewer than 200 kilometers on a single charge may not be eligible for incentives at all. The Conclusion The Chinese government has caused havoc in the industry of electric vehicles. If the government had simply let the sector develop at its own speed, the industry would have thrived. But by artificially decreasing the price for a period of time, the Chinese government has resulted in a supply surplus situation. In China, there are currently more than 460 different electric vehicle manufacturers operating in the country. It's expected that more than half of these manufacturers would go out of business in the next several years. Because the incentives have been severely decreased, automakers have no choice but to hike their prices in order to compete. As a result, when compared to conventional vehicles, they're losing their competitive advantage. Price increases have caused sales at numerous companies, such as Zhongtong Bus Holdings, to decrease dramatically by 40% in response to rapid spikes in the cost of doing business. The net profit for these enterprises has also dropped by 80% as a result of this downturn. It's only a matter of time until numerous of these companies become unprofitable and go bankrupt as a result of the dramatic policy changes implemented by the Chinese government. The bottom line is that governments should refrain from interfering with the development of emerging technology. All great inventions, from electricity to social media, have thrived in the absence of government meddling or oversight. It's preferable to let the markets run their course. Government intervention exacerbates rather than alleviates the problems it seeks to solve. I'm curious as to what you think. Do you believe that the government should interfere and provide assistance to the companies? Also, how do you believe the U.S. government's incentive program will affect the EV businesses in the U.S.? Leave a comment to let us know what you think. Mr. Six Figures has made investments in both Chinese and American markets. He appears to be impatient with the Chinese government and its ability to exert control over everything in China. He will withhold his investment from the Chinese market until the Chinese government resolves their problems with government meddling. Furthermore, he's bullish on American manufacturer Lucid. And that should wrap things up for today. Keep in mind that subscribing's still free and liking helps YouTube recognize your preferences. Thanks for taking the time to watch, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.